Welcome back to the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on this September 23rd, 2020. If you want to reach the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker, please email us at qsblawoffices at gmail.com or head to Twitter at qsblawoffices. Now, we have come across a new client today. Our client is Habits of Infernal Origin. Essentially, what that means is those bad habits we have that come from a dark place. You know, it could be anything is like the monkey on a person's back, like uh, maybe just doing too much heroin, or like what Greg's doing right now, which is smoking those coffin nails that are and so drinking. popular. And drinking. So two of those are going on. But would you consider those to be bad habits, Greg? Do you think that's a smoking and drinking is actually bad? Or has it just got a bad rap? Uh, smoking definitely is, without a question. I think alcohol is necessary for day-to-day -day functions, the <laughs> sanity. I think we'd all go a little crazy if we didn't have that little escape valve in a can or bottle. So are you suggesting that I am crazy, Greg? <laughs> no, you're temporarily insane, but you have a drink every now and then. You've just been a teetotaler for the past couple of months. Uh, you shutdown. know, since March, I've had one shot of tequila. Yeah. And that's it for any form of alcohol that's got... Whoa, wait, that's not quite true. I think when I was in Wyoming, and I was at the restaurant at the resort I was in in Wyoming, the, the ski resort where there was no skiing happening because there was no snow, I think I had an alcoholic beverage there. So maybe two drinks I've had since March. But Did it uh, feel like heaven to you? Was it like, oh, this is good? No, it was oh, kind of sweet. like, uh, yes. I'm with my kids, I can't get drunk. <laughs> yeah. So I had the one, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, I'm I'm not like a huge fan of alcohol in and of itself. You know, for me, it's usually there's a point to it when I'm trying to achieve. That's why it never became a habit for me. Yeah, but cigarettes are all bad. I mean, I, I barely even get pleasure from these things anymore. I literally don't. It's just a sick habit. So when you got and... pleasure from them, what pleasure did you get from cigarettes? Oh, I don't, it just felt great smoking them. It was just, it was, I don't know what it was. It was nice just to, I used to smoke clove cigarettes a lot. And they were sweet and I just, every every inhale was pleasurable. In the past five years, it's just, I'm usually just like, I can't wait till the cigarette's done. Whatever, so you I know, I always thought they should have made one. clover cigarettes. Since they had clove, they should just like one step away, just add the R and you'd have a whole different kind of cigarette. Sure. Just, and it would Wheat just grass be cigarettes specifically for Irish people. Shamrock. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't like where this is heading. <laughs> where is, I don't even know where this is heading, Brendan. Where do yeah. you see this heading? Well, I mean, uh, well, first of all, I would agree with Greg that cigarettes are definitely a, a bad habit. They're, they're a horrible habit. I'm working on kicking. Uh, I've kicked it before and then it came back. Um, you know, I have friends and I want to punch them right in the face. I have these friends. <laughs> Great that, friends. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're fantastic. I love them to death, but I want to punch them in the face because Greg can understand because he probably has similar friends. You'll go out somewhere and you'll have a couple of drinks and this asshole can just like smoke a couple of cigarettes. And that's it. He's done. <laughs> oh, I hate those guys. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, I didn't smoke cigarettes for 11 years. Then I was doing like some construction work and all the guys would, were smoking and I wasn't and they're all standing around on break smoking cigarettes and I'm like give me one of those boom right back next day I bought a pack boom, oh wow right but that yeah. first cigarette must have tasted like crap though it must have tasted just no. like an ashtray no 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 it tasted went, like heaven I was like all oh, right I mean maybe the first couple of drags I was like oh god but then like by the third or fourth I was like all right, I remember this. <laughs> this is after eleven years of not smoking. So, no, wow. so that, that so at that stage, you decide to pick up this bad habit again, right? So, and it wasn't peer pressure; it was just you going. Did you want to just fit in with the boys or something, or you were having <laughs> this nostalgic moment towards cigarettes, where you were like, you know, I want to try that again? Because I quit. I used to smoke, and I smoked for like twenty years, um, and I quit about. 11 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. Yeah. And I was able to kind of eliminate the urges for having cigarettes. So I can be around people who smoke all the time. And I just don't have that desire to grab it. But it's because I, I 
did a little mental shift in my head where I just decided that I was a non-smoker. Like, I just don't smoke, you know. So it's yeah. kind of like, I don't shoot heroin, I don't take PCP, I don't do crystal meth, and I don't smoke either, you know. So that made it kind of an easier mindset to kick that sucker. But I was just curious, like, you went and bought a pack the next day. After yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe off. I'm exaggerating. Was it the next day? But it was certainly well, either within, way. Yeah. It was certainly within the week. Yeah. Um, was I trying to fit in? Nah, it was just I was just standing there, and I felt like you know, fuck. But really, the main thing was that I thought I could do that because uh-huh. of those friends that I want to punch in the face. I thought I'll have a cigarette. I have not smoked for eleven years. I'll have a cigarette with these guys and, you know, kind of be part of the scene and whatever, and then it'll be fine. That reminds me of a guy I knew who was, like, he was in his 40s, and, uh, you know, he had read, led basically a clean life, had done drugs and stuff at certain points in life, but he stopped doing it. But he said at the age of 40, he wanted to start trying crystal meth because he figured, you know, he could do a couple, couple of times, and then he would be fine. And uh, turns out it didn't work out that way for him. He wound up... Huh. Uh, seriously addicted and losing uh, pretty much everything in his life and uh, basically <laughs> he, that's a he shocker was, he was able to finally get it turned around with help you know from like a rehab mm-hmm. area but but yeah it, it's interesting when people go you know i think i could do that and i'll be okay and it makes you yeah work. in tucson i knew a guy in a punk rock band i played music with him and he saw all of our friends get like some of them die from heroin so he hated heroin all through his 20s then in his 30s, he just started saying, well, I know how dangerous it is. I, I just want to try it once. I hear it's really great. I won't get hooked because I know how bad it can be. <laughs> and within a month, he was stealing people's TV sets and shit. It was so fucking pathetic. We listened to him talk about this intellectually. And we were like, I don't know, Johnson. It's not like a good idea. And, within, and then he was a, basically a degenerate uh, drug addict for like five, six years. Then he cleaned himself up. But he well, really fell. Fast and hard. At, at what point did it become degenerate, though? I mean, well, so you have a drug addict, friends. then you have degenerate drug addict. Yeah, so when you can't even like, control it, you're robbing people and for your habit. So that would be but, an infernal habit, I guess, is just the the major monkeys. You know? Yeah. And then you have ones that maybe aren't quite so infernal. You know, like, like biting you your would, nails. You would well, yeah, that be that could be bad because you could like bite through your fingers i guess at some point uh, yeah that happens a lot <laughs> people just or, keep going else. they're just gonna gnaw down to the wrist <laughs> I mean, there, the there, there are just certain habits that are kind of socially unacceptable i think chewing your nails in front of people is one spitting in my them. opinion no i think spit actually spitting around people used to be unacceptable but it's become a little more acceptable also profanity used to be a lot less acceptable and these days it's oh yeah pretty much well that's just fucking ridiculous (laughs) yeah (laughs) but it's like at grocery stores it's the g-rated movies parents will be doing it around other kids and you go at what point did that start being okay you know when did people realized sorry i was just wondering when do we get desensitized i just think people realize that it's not a bad thing who cares if somebody says fuck it doesn't hurt anyone it's it's not an evil thing to do to curse it's well sometimes it as currently, currently, yes, but way back when, you wanted to protect the 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 fairer people from dirty language. You know, it was people with what, vaginas. You're talking about what are we? What are we protecting people? them from exactly? Yeah, there's nothing. To I, I think it was like from. the meaning of those words. What was the intent behind them? I think that's what was the the issue back in the day. You know, was you so did, like so like shit? Yes. versus poop. Right. They're both for, the same thing. Right, but for some reason, one is more offensive than others. Right? I know. Yeah, for some Here. dumb reason. I know a friend who uh, grew up Mormon, and she still has relatives, grown, grown adults, who they'll actually yell out, swear word, instead of a curse. <laughs> but it's like, you're, that's a curse for you, though. You are cursing, because fuck is a nonsense word. It's, it's really doesn't, it's just some word. So if you're yelling out swear well, words, some word fuck means to have sex. I know, yeah. but it's just it, it's really if you didn't know that it's just a syllable. Fuck. Well, that's like any word, Greg. If you don't know what it means, you don't. I know, know but well, swear words. Like wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Fuck, as per George Carlin, has a lot more meanings 
and that I think you're aware of what I'm talking about than just yeah. sex. It's an adjective. <laughs> well, initially, initially it was that way. That's how it started. Right. But certainly yeah. it has changed. It has gone and evolved into a, a wide variety of things. If you, if anybody's interested, they can go look up George Carlin. And there's a lot of routines that he does things about words. Yeah, it's a great word. It's a multi-purpose it's, right. tool. It's one of the most flexible words in the English language. Yeah. I think it's not celebrated as much as it should be. Well, it depends mm -hmm. upon, you know, if you want to get sparklers and let up some fireworks for it. I think children should learn. Celebrate it appropriately. Children should learn all the various iterations of fucking school and grammar because there's so I many. I think they do. <laughs> well, from the teachers. <laughs> to use it properly with proper grammar. If the teachers know how to use them properly. Well, of course, As they must adverb. use it all the time because they have to deal with the children. Yes. That or way. they just say, swear word. <laughs> Well, no, it's, like, it's like uh, the term the F word has become a swear word. Yeah. Right? The mm -hmm. N word has become a swear word. You know, yeah. But that's one you can't really get away with saying if you're a decent human being anymore because of how that invalidates the existence of, of certain uh, classes. Yeah, it's people. hateful. Saying fuck yeah. isn't hateful to anyone unless you're saying fuck you. Unless you're that's... saying it to like people who are celibate <laughs> not me <laughs> yeah not to be controversial but let's just examine this for let's, just a let's second. get controversial <laughs> why is the n-word so heinous when it's dropped on the regular by people of color if it's so heinous why do they say it because that's their way of taking back the word and eliminating the meaning of it for them so that I, th this is my theory, um, so that yeah. when some actual racist, simpleton, white supremacist type uses it in a hateful way, they can just laugh at them as opposed to feeling like they're about to be lynched or pulled behind a truck or whatever the hell those more But you notice that do. gays have done so. it differently. Gays have taken back the word and it's okay to say queer nation or like, you know, as a heterosexual I can write an article about the queer nation or the queer peoples. I think it also America. works like if you're part of They've that ethnic it. group or that religious group or that marginalized group, then it's more okay for you to use it. Now there used to be this show on YouTube um, called Retarded Policeman, which was essentially a guy um, who had Down syndrome who would dress as a policeman and he would have various different adventures. And his reason for doing that was to take back the word retarded so that it wasn't being used as an invective towards people who have that syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, so how language changes. What's that? He impersonated a police officer to take back the word retard? Well, it was fictional. That sounds retarded. <laughs> it was it was fictional. Oh! Um, okay. it, it wasn't done like in real life circumstances. He wasn't going up and actually arresting people. You know. But, it, you know, that was, in my opinion, watching it, it seemed exploitative because if you're talking a person who's got Down syndrome into going ahead with something like this, it kind of seems like you're taking advantage of them for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. But the oh, guy say. seemed intelligent enough in the depths of his Down syndrome to be able to discuss it with people who did bring that up during the course of those episodes. There are websites, they went around for a number of years. Um, anyway, the only point I'm making is just that, you know, language does definitely change. And because of, I think, the sure. constant use of saying fuck on television and getting it bleeped out, people have gotten desensitized to it, so it loses a lot of the meaning. But then other words have taken on more meaning and have become more offensive. Like sometimes um, if you call a person who was formerly in prison a bitch or call them a bitch while they're in prison, them's fighting words... And you could actually get stabbed for saying something like that to somebody, right? That's... Well, I mean, I haven't ser served any considerable amount of time, and I wouldn't want somebody to call me a bitch. Right, but if I said bitch to you, it really wouldn't mean that much, right? But in prison, it's a lot more um, 
vehement. It's a, there's a lot more vitriol behind it whenever you're accusing somebody of being a bitch in prison. And the only reason I say this is I've watched a number of those uh, 60 Days Later shows, you know, where I, I get a little bit educated. Are you not familiar with those particular programs? No, no. 60 Days Later must be on cable television. Um, yeah, I think it's like on A&E, but I was watching it on Hulu, and essentially the, the premise behind that show is they send like seven or eight people in undercover normal uh, everyday citizens to go undercover into prisons, not jails, but they go into, I mean, they go into jails, not prisons, sorry, and to find out like where drugs are coming in and what is what are the the treatment of the prisoners is like and it's usually set up by that the sheriff of that particular county because so these are change something these are these are county lockups these aren't state yeah. penitentiaries yeah these are county lockups oh, those guys are all pussies come on county uh, lockup well you know you'd be surprised how long some of the people stay in those county lockups they can be there for years in those county really? lockups yeah and it can be worse than the uh the federal pens or the state pens because of the um, the very low amount of budgets that go into uh, taking care of the people in those. So the, the, the conditions tend to be very overcrowded and there's like often insane people in there. Yeah. It doesn't well, get as bad as having like serial killers on the block with you. But so there is, I think, a little more sanity at the county level than more, but still drugs get in quite easily and uh, you also get to see the situations with how the the uh, the guards treat the prisoners as well so anyway the point i'm making is just getting back to the word bitch you know that word in that particular circumstance holds a lot of weight um i remember one time i was talking to some guy who was homeless and he was just being a jerk i said you know why are you acting like a dick and he took that completely offensive offended and yeah. uh, I didn't realize it was going to create that much um, drama within that particular conversation, you know. And so I yeah. was apologizing for it because, you know, sometimes you just don't know how, with the effect that words are going to have on people. Especially crazy, crazy homeless people. You never know what's going to set those fuckers up. <laughs> well, that's right. Greg, do you have something you want to say about that? Greg, give a comment uh, regarding homeless people. Oh, it's impossible for you to comment because you're muted. So you're talking, we see your lips moving, Sorry, but guys. no words are I coming out. I the button on accident. No, you didn't do it on accident. That's why I, I did. sent it to you. <laughs> I did do it on accident. Because he's busy con- conducting his infernal habit of smoking. I know, he's but I... Uh, the breathing into the microphone, people. I anyway. think any curse word, even if it's a just like you stinker or something, even mm. if that's a curse. If you say it with a tone, it's gonna, people aren't going to like it. Okay. So if you say you're a jerk, jerk is a very strong, but if, you know, if somebody says to me, you're a jerk, I'd be like, ah, that doesn't feel nice to be called a jerk. So what you're saying now, though, is that words do have a meaning to you, whereas before you were, you were saying that they didn't really like the word fucker. No, when you use them badly. Like if I say you're a fucker, that's not okay. nice to hear, but you can say fuck all you want is, hey, it's fucking great. What a fucking okay. great party. That doesn't hurt anyone's feelings. That's a sign of joy, celebration. Okay, so it's then the intent comes down to it. Yeah. All right, so is that a good or a bad habit, though? Because some people may not recognize the intent. They just know the but bad If I word. say it's a fucking great party, it's, that's their problem. If they get offended at me saying a totally nice thing, like, that was a, such a, thank you for your fucking great time. Oh, it's their problem, is it? Great? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> stupid. To not so like you just don't care. So it's their I do problem. care. So if somebody doesn't wear a mask, you know, and they're around you, it's your problem, not theirs. Because they're not wearing a no. mask, right? Well, yeah, it's there. Because you're offended stupid. by the fact that. Well, still. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I, I kind of sort of side on the point of if somebody is offending you, then it is kind of your problem. Well, of course. But what if? But, I mean, but, but at the same time, you can choose inc- not to be offended. It's incumbent, of course, about anything, right? Sure. It's, it's incumbent upon the person who is saying the offensive thing to recognize that they're offending somebody else, right? And to gauge whether or not it's worth not offending them by is that, saying, is by that saying anything. Post, is that pre or post statement? Pre or are they supposed? Are they supposed to, is, a, is the righteous person or the whatever, the person who's doing the right thing supposed to filter before he speaks or then speak and then realize this person has a problem with it 
and I should take responsibility for it. Like your example of talking to the homeless person and calling him a dick. You called him a dick, and he took offense to it. Right. But you didn't think to yourself ahead of time, maybe I shouldn't call this dick a dick. You yeah. just called you just called him a dick. And then yeah, you went... Yeah. Well, perhaps I should have. Let's put it this way. Let's say the president of the United States, and I wouldn't put it past him, decided to just lace his next speech filled with profanity and invective, but done without intentionally um, targeting any particular group of people. What would that What would that seem like? Suddenly he's like, I want to welcome everyone to the fucking State of the Union and... Uh, <laughs> We're going to have a fucking great time tonight. I'm going to tell you how great the fucking economy's been doing. It's... The economy's been fucking great. we got fucking jobs for all the fuckers out there. I think that could potentially cause a lot of problems. Yeah, but it's sad that that would cause problems, not like constantly lying and undermining the Bill of Rights every day. That That's so, okay. But, but, that's but if a, he says fuck a few That's times. a different issue. But the question, know, is, the question is, are we talking about the current president or okay. some... Well, any imagined president, president, any president, really. I mean, like, come on, guys. If if Barack Obama had come out and said, "Look here, motherfuckers, we're kicking ass," there would have been a whole bunch of people that would have been like shit. standing. Oh, I don't know absolutely. about that. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Fox, Fox News would have lost their shit. Oh, I'm sure Fox News <laughs> would have lost their shit. Well, yeah, and all of the hypocritical evangelists would have lost it as well. Yeah, sure. I would have loved it, though. I would have been like, but wow, I would have guys... loved it. You guys would have yeah. thought it was funny or entertaining or whatever. Yeah. I, I would mean, have it would... thought it inappropriate. Personally, I would have said that. I would have thought. Very it much depends. It depends. Okay, yeah. so let's 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 we're going to drill down on this. So, okay, if he's at a state dinner with heads of state and he gets up and he starts laying the fucking f bombs. Yeah, that's super inappropriate. If he's at a press conference and somebody yells some shit at him and he says he drops an f bomb, really? Are you offended? Yeah. Well, I'm, of I'm not president? personally offended, but I think right. in terms of decorum, there's something to be said about decorum. I think, and I think that if you're able to, in moments like that, take the high road, I think there's something to be gained by that. I, I, don't I don't think you have to get you. down in the dirt with everybody. I don't, I don't think that has to you. happen. Yeah, but but I, I think decorum is overrated. Maybe, but what yeah. would we know, right? I don't know. We don't I, have I'm any decorum. The least decorum person I know. <laughs> so yeah. it's easy for us to say. You know, yeah, absolutely, but we have no class. Right. So, we're like so, a school at nighttime. Sure, we're we're basically, you know, all of the. I can't even think of an analogy at the moment, but we're just monkeys. Let's just put it that way. We're monkeys. I'm going to try to be more decorum-ish for the future. Really? I don't That's know. That's going to be you... my little project. Really? You're going to like self-help. You're going to listen to yourself talk before the words come out of your mouth. Yeah. No, I'm just not going to talk. I think that would be the best thing. Just, just don't talk. You just stay mute. Sit there and shut up, and you won't offend anyone. So if you're working at Burgerville, do you often do you often say, "Did you like your fucking burger to people?" Whenever they, uh... well, I don't have to talk to customers, but I say "fuck" plenty. When I get hot oil on my hands, I'm just "fuck." Ow. That'll do it. You also yeah. sound a little bit like a crow when you do that. I wanted to defend one bad habit. Uh, I think picking your nose is necessary sometimes, and it's considered such a faux pas. You know, try to do it when no one's looking. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta get that booger out of there. It's, it's <laughs> making it hard to breathe. It's it's unpleasant. Oh, no, it's no, like, no, sorry, no, I gotta get it. No, nose picking is fine. Uh farting is fine. It's uh -huh. just it where sometimes. it's just where you do it. Yeah, yeah, farting is something you really can't control. You can control nose picking though. Yeah. You can I don't know, maybe Maybe I have some sort of superpower I didn't realize. I can, it's not that I the, the ones with the, something will slip, but I kind of know when I'm going to fart, and I can go if I'm in a room with people. I can move somewhere else. I remember my mother telling me that uh, my dad would never fart it in public, and I, I thought about it, and I went, you know, I don't think I ever heard him do that. I then I, then I look back at my own history, and I'm like, I am not my father. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you, I I can count on like, maybe two hands in in recent history that I actually absolutely accidentally farted in a public place. Yeah, 
My dad would fart in front of us, not in a public place, but like we're in the car. We always knew he farted because it rolled down the windows, even though it was 20 below. It rolled down the window. I was like, oh, dad, that went out. No, yeah, my yeah. my dad never did anything like that. Never blamed anything on the dog. Um, but my yeah. dad was a pretty a hardcore straight arrow type, and a military everything controlled type of individual. So I think well, that's probably him. why. Yeah, well, you know, he, he's now retired, living near you, actually, Brendan. Where? Oh, I can't even remember the town, but it's he's right like, outside your door right now. <laughs> he's tried with his <laughs> him blind in one eye. Uh, I can't. I think it's it's uh, somewhere north of you in in the Tampa Bay area, though. I just can't. Brooksville. Nah, I don't remember the name Spring of the town. Spring Hill. Nope. Fre- Freak Town. Port Ritchie. <laughs> no, not even Newport Ritchie. Neither one. Right. <laughs> it wasn't in either of those. Gimp Gimpville. <laughs> hey, what are you saying about my dad, Greg? <laughs> no, well, I'm talking about the Freak Towns around Florida. Where are the All right, that's a different episode. Yeah. All right, so. So picking your nose, Greg. So do you do you do it around other people a lot? No, I try to hide it. But do I you mean, ever sometimes... like show them the 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 thing that you conquered, the golden no, nugget that you were I, like I do, working at so hard? To get well, out. Would, my brothers used to have uh, friends who would like be like so proud of their shits and be like, "You got to see this shit I just took. Come to the bathroom." <laughs> they wanted people to see their. They look like how Jesus huge it was. What is yeah, that? maybe yeah. It was a unicorn shaped pooper. <laughs> No, I think it was just because of the size. They were so proud of their humongous donkey shit. Wow. They had that's to weird. show that's it off. That's a weird fetish. That is yeah. so, that's a very bad habit, just that. Not yeah, even that doing the, the shit, but like requiring people to come and <laughs> exactly. look at it and admire it and go, With well, pride. you obviously held that in there for a couple of days and you did a great job of acting like a cow in a pasture. <laughs> Yeah, and that's another thing, you know, cows and pastures. It's not. Um, when I was a kid, I lived in Pennsylvania, and we um, we were near in farm er- farm territory, and we would go place baseball in pastures and in pastures. And you would find sometimes you need to be careful where you stepped because your leg yes. could go in it. And yeah, I, the whole leg. Well, big. not well, not the whole leg, but you know, it get it, because you know we were kids, it could get up halfway up the shin. I knew that when I worked at a cafe in the eighties in Tucson, there was this guy who used to come and we called him Zog because uh-huh. he looked like a caveman. He had a very low low brow and is Zog a, sweet, a normal sweet, name for cavemen? Kind of, it sounds like a caveman name to me. And he would he'd grunt basically. And this guy was really in a roughage. So he'd always eat like the whole melon rind, the honeydew. He wanted to eat the rind. He ate the rind. Yeah, because he was really in a being, you know, a good digestion. And he would take these dinosaur-sized shits in our bathroom and clog the toilet like once a week. And it always come out. He wouldn't brag about it. He would just say, your bathroom is broken. As if he didn't have any, anything to do with it. And it's like, yeah, because you keep taking these fucking dinosaur shits in our toilet. You're they eating huge. cantaloupe rind. They were huge. I've never, they were seriously like the size of a horse. A horse turd. They were huge. Like an actual horse, not the turd. The, the horse <laughs> yeah, itself. a pony at least. They were so <laughs> the fucking big. The man shit the pony. Toilet. <laughs> yes. Wow. I guess that's not a bad habit, though. It's, I think that bad habit there is eating the rind because it, does that have any nutritional value at all? I think it's roughage, so I guess it was part of his diet. Like, well, it's kind of like to... saying eating tree bark is roughage. I don't know that it's necessarily good for you. Well, it could be. Yeah, maybe it's bad for you. It's good to have I, good. I think um... a bad. I think the bad habit here is 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 taking immense dumps in public places. <laughs> that that's be, an yeah. incredibly bad habit. That? That's I think a terrible thing. That the only thing that's good for is handling roaches, you know, roach control in a particular environment. Just I mean, I know I go, I go completely out of my way to not shit in public. Oh, yeah, I hate doing it in public with a passion. Do you guys think that public urination? Pause. Edit. Hold on. What? Sorry, you're gonna have to edit that out. Okay, I'm gonna start over. Okay. <laughs> what is going on, Greg? You decided to start walking mower. away. No, a lawnmower, a guy with a leap blower just walked by the window and it was totally loud. I, I oh, I didn't, it. I didn't even hear that. <clears throat> I didn't hear okay, it. and scene. So do, what do you guys think about <laughs> uh, public urination? Do um, you, you get some of a bad habit? <laughs> yes, Greg. Yes. Really? You mean if it's you're just doing it in the middle of a restaurant? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, like you're walking home late at night and you got to pee. And you're, I don't want to pee my pants. It's like, 
And, you know, pee is astringent. It's not like taking a shit, which can spread disease. So it's not going to hurt anyone. And it's like, but it's considered so bad. Like, well, the it's smell the of it can be horrible, though. I mean, why yeah. would you do that in public and ruin other people's smells? Well, I, guess, I mean, I, you know, I guess that's not, I don't, that doesn't really, in my opinion, fall in the category of habit. Well, I think if for you, some people it might be. Well, yeah. I mean, if you habitually pee in public, then you've got a problem. If Oh, I did. If you're walking home and you got to pee and otherwise it's a problem, and so you go into the bushes and you pee, uh, you know, whatever. No no fault, no harm. But Sometimes if you're just – Go ahead. I was going to say, if you're just actively, like, seeking out places to go publicly urinate uh, – I wasn't actively. I, I used to walk dogs six days a week, and I, they were like two-hour walks, and I didn't have to pee. I, I have a small bladder, so I was always peeing in public, at least every did, day. Did you pee with the dogs? You like use the same fire hydrant with them? No, they they never. We were never on the same cycle. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, they probably peed a lot more often than you. But yeah. I would think the one time you would want to go, you would you would like talk to the dog and go, hey. Where's your favorite spot? I'm going to go there with you. Yeah. Just to show camaraderie you. with the dog. <laughs> yeah, I'd be trying to, I'm like, look how high I can pee, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to lift my leg. But, you know, sometimes, Greg, I wonder, you bring up things on the podcast, and I think the podcast is used by you to learn social niceties sometimes. You're, like, you're trying to find justifications for bad behavior. I need but, to you know, know these <laughs> We find out if it's okay to pee in public a lot. <laughs> Remember when we were talking about like what it's like being alone? It's like you, you lose track of social mores and what's normal. So I, <laughs> you guys are my uh, go-to for like, okay, guys, am I drifting too far from the norm? Well, um, I mean, I'm assuming there's a point in your life where you did generally know what the right thing was to do, and you're saying you drifted away from that. Is that some of them? Talking? I rejected. I, just said, I got, I'm not going to pee in my pants and be all uncomfortable for an hour and walk home. I'm going to pee. Well, why, why, did you, why not just pee in your pants and be uncomfortable on the walk home? What's wrong with that, Greg? That's you horrible. Have nice damp pants. That's uncomfortable, yeah. <laughs> Especially when it's cold. Well, it does warm you, I guess. Yeah. So then, then the question becomes, is it okay to pee my pants in public on a regular basis? Yeah, that's a pretty bad habit, too, right you there. You know, right? If, if, if I had to pick my next-door neighbor and he, you know – peed in the bushes down the street or he just came home every day with his wet pants, I probably wanted to pee in the bush. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for the guy. His laundry bill. Him and his pee pants. His yeah. little dirty pee pants. Walking that just around. seems like, come on, man. Now, shitting, right, well, up, shitting in public's a whole different issue because that's, you know, like I don't even like when dogs, when people will pick up their dog poop, that really angers me when I almost yeah. step in dog shit. Oh. So a human would do the same, you know, I'd be just as angry at a human shit. Okay, so you're okay with them peeing in public, just not peeing Yeah, in public. it just disappears. It goes into the grass, you know. Except for the smell and the death of the grass. No, I heard it's good for grass. The death of the grass. Pee is good for vegetation. <laughs> Apparently Greg is pissing hydrochloric acid and just <laughs> killing grass and natural wildlife with his urine. That's because Greg comes from another planet. And this no, it's because it's like half with hydrochloric acid. <laughs> He's a walking acid bag. All right, let's try a different bad habit then. What do you think about people who eat with their mouth open? Like, oh, I do that a lot. Shit. I'm going to be right quiet now? about this. <laughs> um, Some people consider I, it a bad habit, you know, because it's like... I mean, I don't know. It's a degree thing. I mean, I don't think I would be overly offended if somebody did that. Yeah. I mean, unless it was just like there was a guy I worked with um, and he would make these giant plates of God knows what. And he, he did that. He ate with his mouth open. The biggest problem wasn't necessarily anything other than the ambient sound and that I was in the office. <laughs> you know, so I'm like That's on the phone with click a customer. On a pen. Yeah, I'm right. on the phone with a customer trying to talk loud as this guy's like, arr, arr, arr. "Oh my lord!" <laughs> Is like that the noise? He, that was the noise he made. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't even just the chewing part; it was the initial biting part was bad too. Yeah, he just made a lot of fucking noise. I mean, <laughs> if you wanted to, fine. But did you have to like? accentuate the noise. I even brought it up to him like, dude, is it 
really necessary to make that amount of noise while you're eating? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you make a lot of noise. Like, I don't I've had customers, of... I've had customers go, what's that noise? Literally. It's a dinosaur. I've got a dinosaur yeah. in my office. I don't I make a lot of noise, but I do eat with my mouth open and people have remarked, uh, I don't know how unsavory it is. And I got to say though, it's so much more pleasurable to eat that way. When I try to eat with my mouth closed, it's not as pleasurable. The, huh. the Wait chewing, a second. What's the difference between having your mouth open or closed other than making smacking noises? I don't know. I don't think I make that. I'm not that loud, but you can see my mouth open and see, see food the, in there. The food It's not pleasant, out. apparently. Yeah, people yeah. don't like it, apparently. But I really try, and it just makes eating not as fun or something. I don't know. Not as good an experience. Does that explain the off, many times you've spit in my face by accident? when you? That's talking? a different thing. I, I don't want to spit. That doesn't make talking to you more pleasurable. Like overactive salivary glands and something I get hit in the eye. Uh, anyway, Greg. I am known for that. I'm pretty bad. I had a friend oh, in college. A... Go ahead. I was going to say, are you a frequent gleeker? What's gleeking? Gleeking is when, like, for whatever reason, usually sometimes if you're going to eat something or something sour or you're eating something spicy, this stream of saliva just sort of pops out of your mouth that's called gleeking he doesn't have a stream it's just like sp- yeah little spittle. random spittles See, i thought a gleek yeah. was the thing that you was basically like passing a kidney stone was the thing that passed through your re- urethra as a gleek that's what i thought a gleek was no no it's it's what you're talking about it's that spittle that just sort of happens when somebody's talking it's also a caveman name too Gleek, Gleek Zog and Zog. And Gleek. That was the original odd couple, Gleek and Zog. <laughs> one of them cleaned Zog. up the cave. The other one was just made a mess in the cave. Kept leaving like animal droppings throughout the cave. And the other one was like, what are you doing? You got to clean this up. And he went and out. And then hijinks would ensue in the place he A lot of <laughs> hijinks through Zog and Gleek's <laughs> odd couple. Gleek was cave, really upset about living. Zog. Yeah, Zog's giant shits really pissed Gleek off. Because <laughs> he was eating all the watermelon rind. As well as the, <laughs> the rind around the saber tooth tiger. So, what I was saying before was that a friend in college used to eat with his mouth open and he would be kind of loud, like that noise. So, the way I found to address that was instead of saying something to him directly, I just started making that sound louder. So, he was like, making that sound. So, I started going. When he goes low, you go lower. That was your motto. Well, I like people to recognize um, that they are recognized as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that they, what they're doing has been, has been seen, has been noticed, and perhaps, you know, you can make a judgment about it, or you can let me keep making fun of you. Your choice. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I well, don't mind say- me making fun of you. I'll just keep doing it because I enjoy it, but that's just me. Yeah, I got to say, I don't think I've had a lot of people in my life that were open mouth eaters. Yeah, there's not a lot of them, but they're out there you, here and there. Yeah, other than this one guy at the office, and it was mostly just a goddamn noise. All right, what, what about, would you guys say is your worst habit? My Still worst, little, my worst habit round. is probably procrastination. Just yeah, putting things off one. and putting things off and putting. Oh, things off. that's an easy out. Procrastination. Come on, you've got a dirty habit that you don't want to talk about. Well, I do have a picture of you that I sit on a lot, but I didn't want to talk about that one. Oh. Well, <laughs> that's since not you a made habit. me, since yeah, you made me bring that one up, that's beyond but, a habit. Well, now. no, I mean procrastination is the one main thing that uh, I bothers me the most, and I I think has messed up my life the most. Really, is because. So many things but, just don't get done when they need to get done and not doing things when I should do them. And it's no, no, I get it. I get many it. things that are incomplete and they need to pile on and pile on. It's just. I get it. That, I yeah. get it. But but what I'm saying is we're talking about farting in public, open mouth chewing, booger picking, yeah. smoking to a certain extent. You're talking about something that's more or less mostly internal. I wouldn't know that if well, you and I. It's a habit. Yeah, but well, I'm talking about habits that other people would notice that okay. you would go. Well, he you wants something qualify. gross. That's what he wants. Something no, I don't gross. want something gross. Mine would be smoking. I know that smoking is a filthy habit. It I know that gross. most of the people I know don't smoke. And I feel sh- I like have to go outside. I have to. It's like, yeah. The, the leper that, colony. Yeah, it's horrible. So you want like a an overt habit that is recognized by other people 
that um, I should feel that I feel shame for something like that. I don't give a shit if you feel shame for it. I don't, I'm not shamed because I smoke. I just know it's a filthy habit. Yeah. But my point is that I could say, you know, I just really don't put enough time in my own personal development. That's my bad habit. Oh, come on. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I, I think yours is crotch I grabbing. Well, like oh. most of my habits are like that, though. Most of those are the personal development habits that I can think of, you know, it's like, I don't smoke and I don't really drink that often. And I don't really pick my nose in public and I don't really fart around people except for like family. I know um, that so you are, do that. are people around you impacted by your procrastination? Um, because things don't get done in the house and it starts to feel like I'm creating a hoarding environment by letting things continue to go on. But see, for me, it's, that's more of my problems is there are more, passive issues than active issues so i'm not out spitting on people i think probably my bigger habit is probably just being a smart ass more than anything else being mean i guess would be the thing that would affect other people more than others but you guys would know better than me yeah you know? it's kind of a habit i don't think you can stop yourself from saying <laughs> a lot of it's pretty things. unintentional you know, they, they come I, I out think, i they... think yeah i think we've talked about this and that yes. and that is itself a habit for sure yes yeah and it's something that i continue to recognize and i, I have to make a judgment after i say something too and go oh did, did i say something mean <laughs> was that mm. was that should i not have said that one i'm like well we'll see i mean they'll either say something about it or not and we'll just or they'll never forward. talk to you again right there's always that possible possibility but you know i'm i'm used to that you know i i don't have any friends so that's, that's I have too many bad habits. This show would be four hours long. So, <laughs> well, <let's, laughs> how about this? How about smoking? talking during movies in a movie theater for oh, a bad habit? That. But a I'm just habit. saying that we're doing these bad habits. I'm just saying that is a habit that some yes. people do. Oh, so how it doesn't happen every time with theaters, but it happens enough when we were still going to theaters before you know the virus hit. Um, that you go, what the hell's wrong with people? Why are they talking during this? It's like they think it's their house or something yeah you know? well now we have new bad habits because of cell phones like i was just talking about this the other day like i have friends my age they're not millennials they're not like they don't have any excuse that they grew up with this shit and you'll be like having dinner with them just you and them and they'll be taking looking at facebook chuckling to themselves ignoring you it's just like what the fuck are you doing i'm sitting right here you're yeah. ignoring me for your facebook or your tinder page or whatever it's crazy. But they're, they're, but they're there they're, chuckling to themselves. Yeah, they wouldn't even share it with you. They wouldn't say, don't hey, light that cigarette, Greg. Do not light that cigarette. You just had one like a minute ago. You oh, don't yeah, need to. Suck, you don't need to suck you. another one down. Well, I do. You don't need to put the bad habits on display <laughs> for the bad habit episode. We're just pointing out bad habits. We're not trying to stop them on this episode. That's too much but, to ask for. But but but, <laughs> despite his chain smoking, because I mean I smoke. I, He's amazing. You, maybe he's just chain smoke. Do you, do you smoke this much all the time? No, he doesn't. No, but usually when I'm on the phone, I do chain smoke. Right? It's this uh, thing. So, so being on the phone is kind of a trigger? Yeah, if I'm on a phone call, I, if I didn't have cigarettes, I'd be just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, I my, when I get in my car, that's a trigger for me. Like, oh, if yeah. I get in my car, I got to light a cigarette. Or waiting for the bus. If I had to wait for the bus, I'm just like, I don't, I don't even feel like a cigarette. Bus, but I can imagine. But I got, I'm going to smoke a cigarette because I have five minutes before the bus comes. Yeah, I get it. Um, but back in the day when I rode a bus and I smoked, it was almost a sure sign that the bus would be coming up soon if I finally lit a cigarette. Yes, that because is Because that's true. when the bus would usually show up. <laughs> I'd have to put it out. I'm like, ah, that's not okay. So, all right, so let's do another bad habit. How about uh, public displays of affection by people? I never cared about that. I just, you don't care? I, God bless people if they're... They can't even wait to go home and make out. So Good you'd be them. okay with them just having sex right in front of you, really? Ah, that's a little much. That's so. The, where's I, the I line? Would, where's the line drawn? Where? Where is in it? My world, Matt, in my world, Matt. In my perfect world, that would be fine. If I was at a bar and two people wanted to fuck, I'm a hip, a hippie at heart, an old, yeah. flaming liberal. Right. It, ideally, I really don't care. I'm not going to say what assholes. I can't believe they're fucking in front of me. I'd be like, well, good for them. Yeah, but does it depend upon how much clothing they're wearing or not? Would you be okay if they just took off all their clothes right in front of you? That might be a bonus. Say it like McDonald's or something. I watch porn. There's a habit right there, a bad habit maybe some people consider. 
So it would be like, hey, free porn. I'm getting free porn right now. Live. Well, live 3D, sex show. 3D, right. Yeah, live. I don't so, so there's no line in the sand for you there? No, no, I'm saying, but I know people, like, if some teenage kids are making out on the bus, they're all just like, oh, that's terrible. I'm like, shut up. They're in love. You know? I just don't like hearing fluids being, like, um, put back in between people. <laughs> you can hear them. <laughs> slosh, slosh. Well, it's like the Blah. talking with your mouth open. It's like having sex with your mouth open. It's, um... <laughs> Smacking noises, yeah, you know, it just skeeves me out a little bit. <laughs> public public displays of affection are fine with me. I mean, you you kind of took it to you know fucking a McDonald's. That's that's unsanitary. Yeah, so that right. kinda, gets the help. Yeah, so there's like a line. It's like where does that line get drawn? Yeah, the line is naked body slapping flesh on a table in McDonald's. That that's you know. But if they're the not counter. naked, then it's okay? What are you talking about? I think the line is oh, even before that. Oh, so if he's just slipping his cock out of his jeans and kind of like dorking her in the back while they're waiting for their McNuggets, is that what you're talking about? I'm saying, is that your line? What do you, you said the line in the sand was with the, the people being naked at McDonald's. I would think the line would go back a lot farther. Than I think it's that. when bodily fluids are exchanged. That's when it becomes unhealthy. When jizz well, can get out of your Big Mac. <laughs> Or pussy juices well, could be on your fries. I'm not going to be that close to them to get any of their. I mean, unless he's Superman, I'm not getting his jizz on my <laughs> big guy. <laughs> unless you're there trying to catch it with the bun over. But again, but again, that, that goes <laughs> into sauce. you know that that goes into existing laws of you know public nudity and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, but that's yeah, laws. We're not talking about laws. We're just talking about you know things that are bad habits. Okay, then I don't give a shit. They want a fucking McDonald's, fine. I'll just okay. move to the other part of the McDonald's. But if they do it in the ball pit, that's where I draw the line. They can't fuck in the ball pit. <laughs> that's kids wrong. Going. Yeah. Right, because they get the ball stuck in their asses. All right, so what would be another bad habit? How about <laughs> how about Facebook, Greg? You think Facebook's a Facebook addiction is a bad Hell habit, Oh, yeah. Greg? Yeah. Well, when people are ignoring me, my friends, I haven't seen in a year. That's a bad habit. It's rude. They're ignoring you for Facebook? In other words, they're yeah, like, like because saying, they need to be on Facebook? No, no. I'm saying, like, I'll go out to dinner with someone, and it's just them and me. And they'll just be, I want to chat with them, you know? I haven't, I haven't seen, let's catch up. And they're looking at their Facebook, looking at their Tinder, all that shit. It's just incredibly it's rude, It's a horrible I habit. I deleted yeah. Facebook off my phone last week. Again? Yep. Oh, wow. What made you decide to get off of Facebook? I'm just I, there's there's nothing of any value to it. There's nothing. absolutely no value to it at all for me. Ah, okay. I get some good links every now and then. Somebody will post some cool video, and I'm glad I saw it. But I'm not addicted to it. I can take it or leave it. Every now and then, maybe once a month, I'll get on Facebook because someone sent me a message saying you've got something on Facebook waiting for you. Yeah, I Sometimes use it mainly okay. for like um, networking purposes. Because I just yeah. really like LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I'm I'm more of a LinkedIn person yeah. because that's kind of my my wheelhouse. Right. Facebook. I'm not getting any business out of Facebook. Well, I found out about a new kind of Facebook today. Somebody brought it up to me. It's something called Fit Life or Fet Life, which is apparently um, Facebook for people with fetishes. So I thought I should let Greg know about that one. That could be interesting fetishes. at least. Fet Life. You don't have a fetish, Greg. My I fetish find is asexuality. <laughs> I found it so hard to believe. No, I mean, I, I do have my I fetishes. can imagine you in like a full rubber suit with a red rubber ball in your mouth. That's kind of like what I'm thinking. Or a sexy men's habit. How long, how long have you been thinking about that, Matt? Uh, about three seconds when I just made it up. <laughs> oh, okay. Just checking. Sure, out. Matt. Okay. <laughs> I know what to get you for Christmas. Right. A little photo shoot. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I want. What I've never, with? I've never saw that, you know, uh, Dom, you know, up. And now I get it. No, that's totally, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> that left a lot to interpretation, Brendan. I don't know what that was you just did, but it certainly, you didn't give an opinion, and yet you gave one at the same time. Years of public relations, <laughs> right? So uh, one, one that's a. Uh, a serious bad habit for many of our youth are video games where they've like taken over their lives and they're not actually doing anything with the exception of maybe working and then playing video games. 
I don't mm. know if you guys have witnessed that occurring or not. Is it a habit or just they really like? I mean, like I used to watch tons of movies when I was a kid, and uh-huh. that's the new entertainment medium for kids. Video games have gotten pretty entertaining. Yeah, but when does entertainment stop being entertainment? It becomes detrimental. I guess if you're not doing anything else that you need to get done. Yeah. Well, you're like just like drinking, visiting other people. You're not socializing in any way. You're just basically at work and then home in front of a game and just playing the game until, you know, you're not getting enough sleep and you get to work late and that type of thing. I think that would be like television, right? Well, yeah, which would also be a bad habit, too. right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've got I've got two boys, and they played video games, and they held jobs, and they came home, and they played video games, and um, but you know, if they didn't have video games, they would have been watching television, or they would have been doing something else. Um, I, I think the point it becomes a bad habit is like anything. It's like you know, you can have a glass of wine with dinner or two, and. You know, you're fine. Or you can, like, be a fucking raging alcoholic. It's, at the point it starts affecting your outside life, then then it's a, then it's a bad habit. Otherwise, yeah, not getting it's your shit something done. else to do. Right. And that there is where the infernal nature of it comes into play is the thing that takes... Like, you could do a little bit of heroin. Some people, I'm sure, could. Like, some people can just smoke a couple of cigarettes. But some people could do a little bit of heroin and not get addicted to it. They could do it quote unquote recreationally and not that not that have not have that addiction. So that's a bad habit because it's against the law in that sense. But if you could get away with just doing small amounts of drugs here and there over the course of a year, not every day, is it a bad habit? It is yeah. with heroin because most guys do get addicted. It's pretty rare. I haven't. I've known a lot of people who've done heroin. I don't know many who be like, "Oh yeah, I did it three or four times. It's pretty fun." They usually <laughs> just become addicts. It's, it's yeah, a dangerous I mean, drug. you know, the different drugs are. Greg's right. I mean, different drugs are different. I mean, yeah. crystal meth and and heroin is not something you want to play around with, but. Yeah, but I don't know mushrooms or weed or whatever. Fine. Yeah, I I never heard of an LSD addict in my life. All the guys I knew t- took LSD. None of them were ever addicted to it. Yeah, I don't think I ever heard of an LSD addict either. I yeah. think that was one. No, I took I a lot of it. I never became addicted. Yeah, I think that just used up a lot of your time. <laughs> yeah, but it was a, a good use of time. I yeah. love LSD. It was a great. Uh, you know, the the thing about it is, if you're just looking at a dollars for for product thing oh yeah quite LSD true yeah. really really cheap for hours and hours and hours of altered states yeah we're yeah, not advocating drugs boys and girls just so you know we're not oh i am try them. lsd everyone <laughs> it's a wonderful mind expanding consciousness and make sure drug. you drive a bus before after you take it <laughs> and go if, to a high if, building because you can fly it's awesome if any of our listeners are planning on doing this and I don't recommend it, but if they would, you need to have a buddy who is all who's not on the drug with you at all times. <laughs> That's this is coming from wisdom of experience. Right. If you don't have like good self control about things, you should have a friend with you. If you have general self control, you can do it on your own and be okay. Uh, I used to do it by myself a lot. Yeah. I take four yeah. hits. I trip hard and just like. My brain were just, oh, man, it was so much fun. I'd understand the whole universe for three hours. <laughs> so <laughs> why like, just, what, do you still take it, Greg? No, it's just like I think you do run out of time in your life. Even though I don't have kids and our family, I have a crappy job. It still seems like as you get older, you have less free time because that's uh-huh. a day. LSD, and maybe yeah, a day and a half. two days, really. The yeah, day, day where you're doing it and the next day recuperating from exactly. it. Exactly. So it's like I don't really seem to have – even though I don't do much in my life, it's just, it's just harder to do. But I probably would love to do it again if I was uh, out of work or something. What if you did <laughs> that, that, that? As soon as I get fired from my job, I'll start doing LSD again. Do you think if you're on LSD and then you did heroin while you're on LSD, what kind of effect would it have on you? I don't know. It would uh, I think it would be, be, nice. think be a huge buzzkill. Yeah, I probably would. Because, you know, drinking even, drinking on LSD would kind of mute the effects. I never, my friends would take LSD and then get drunk and it'd be like, dude, you're like killing half the buzz of the LSD. Like it deadens no, your no, brain. No. 
Now, Greg, what you know what you did. You, you did it, and then you drank orange juice. Oh, yeah. I used to do that. Huh? It would activate the LSD things or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the, the lysergic mm. acids would get increased by the orange juice. No, yeah. If you definitely... It was I never like, heard this story before. Yeah, yeah. In, the LSD, in the LSD world, if, if you were doing LSD, yeah, you didn't drink, you didn't smoke pot, you didn't do anything else, but you drank lots of orange juice first of all it helps because a lot of a lot of the lsd is cut with strychnine and other kind of toxic fucking chemicals right so it kind of reduces a little bit of that bullshit and it's and you're you're get thirsty so rather than drinking beer which is what some people do if you drank orange juice it did expand the overall effect of the drug i had i I had a cousin the first cousin from like one of my mother's first cousin who said he was a vegetarian because he got better highs from LSD. Mm. Which I thought was an but interesting reason to be a vegetarian. I knew some kids, like they were teenagers at the time, and they'd always get the shitty LSD that I used to get in Tucson, you know, tons of strychnine, so your teeth would be grinding. Don't eat do you that, Take the brown Do you know about that? Then. Yeah, do you know about that? Like if you have, if it's badass, oh. it was strychnine, oh, it makes oh. your teeth grind. You're just like, ah. And so <laughs> yeah. they finally got some good acid after years, and it didn't make their teeth grind because it was pure and they felt ripped off. They were like, this isn't the right shit. How come our teeth aren't grind- wanting to cry? You know? They didn't know what good acid was supposed to feel like. They couldn't tell from the other effects? Well, I think they liked the other effects, but they also thought it was like, ah, oh, this isn't right. It's <laughs> yeah, it's part of the process. No, I, yeah. I, I, I stopped doing blotter acid at a certain point. It was just getting direct vials of... of- oh, my. <laughs> you got to be careful with that shit. I would put it in my eye. Yeah. Oh, man. Does this this, explain some things now, Greg, about Brendan? Yes. To this day, if I just take a little piece of paper, I don't know, every now and then, I don't know why, maybe I'm ripping out um, something, an envelope, and just having a piece of paper in my mouth for a second, that taste, it will give me a little flashback. It reminds you of the day. Yeah, it almost like when I grind my teeth. Got a little cartoon character on a little square piece of paper. Yep. (laughs) I think right, I had well, um, Mr. Natural. LSD talk. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad Let's habit. Talk about good well, Welcome to LSD, the podcast. <laughs> welcome to Wavy Gravy and the Friends. <laughs> All right, how about not getting enough sleep? Would that be considered a bad habit? Um, I mean, because that habit? can affect you. If you make if you make that happen on a regular basis and not getting enough sleep, it could definitely be bad. You know, if it starts yeah. piling up after a while and you're groggy and but, it can be but, dangerous to other people, is it a bad habit if if you if you're an ins- if you have insomnia? I mean, there are you know issues that people have with you know just getting eight hours of sleep in a night. Um, well, insomnia is a condition that's different than a habit. I know. So, so what would constitute a habit in this it's case? Like deliberate, like staying up too late when you know you should be going to bed. I feel like we're talking about your teenagers. <laughs> yeah, we've gone from we've... video games. to I don't think you know what my sleep. sleep schedule is, Grim. <laughs> yeah, Matt just wants free counseling now, and he doesn't want to pay for a counselor, so he has us <laughs> answer his questions about his teenagers. <laughs> I'm not talking about Greg. You know what my sleep schedule is like. <laughs> I don't oh, I have insomnia. I'm just up all freaking night. I stay up till five or six in the morning I know, for no you... reason. But when do are you, you sleep sure, till, though? Am I sure of what? Are you sure there's no reason why you stay up all night? Well, I, I know what the reasons are, but they're not good reasons. Like what? Because you want to finish a Netflix show or... Or that, yeah, either binge watching something or playing video games on my phone or um, or pod- working on the, the podcast and uh, editing it and just, you know re-listening to things you know where but i can, just, just, I can finish it off and go to bed and just do it the next day when do you wake ask... up though that varies that varies from day to day i, mean, I wake up whenever i wake up sleep? I yeah, get, so... it depends upon the day like like last night i got four hours of sleep oh that's not good yeah, that's I, went, big... I went to bed at five and i woke up at like nine you just have a different sleep schedule though i don't know if that's a bad habit some people like the night time they're, uh... they're not else you know, I've always felt like I should have some kind of real schedule, and then, um, and then I work, then I get my own job, and which would keep me going until three o'clock in the morning anyway. So I got used to that schedule, but I'm not really mm-hmm. doing that now. So it's like I'm trying to readjust and go to bed when my wife goes to bed. But what happens is I'll go to bed when she goes to bed, 
but then I'll just stay up playing games on my phone. <laughs> right, right. Just, well, like well, in bed well, with her. I'm like, oh, you know, I should put this away and just go to sleep for crying out loud. Right. Let me let me give you some perspective that may may help. I um, Ho- Holly goes can just can go to bed at nine or ten o'clock as we've seen, and she's one of these people that just hits the pillow. And oh, she's I'm, out. I'm actually like that too. I can fall asleep pretty fast. Uh, see, I, don't, I, don't. I don't have insomnia. No, I just stay up. I know. I stay up what? past the time. There's a reason I got what I call the catapult chair at home, which is a chair that it basically raises to get you out of the chair. One of it is because I'm just really fat and it's hard on my knees to get out of here. But the other reason is sometimes I'd be seeing, staying downstairs far longer than I should and I get to a point where I'm so tired, I'm too tired to get out of the chair but not too tired to fall asleep in the chair. So if I keep my thumb, my thumb still works on the button, it forces <laughs> me to get out of the chair. I've been there. It causes me situation. to go to bed. So <laughs> okay. a bar here. Well, I use that as like a bypass system to, you know, my own thoughts all right well you know what matt that sounds like that might be a bad habit yeah it's, I mean, you know it's not every day but it happens enough where i'm annoyed by it I, i've been bar. working on i've been working on getting more sleep that's a habit that i've been trying to change because i um uh you know just based on work i stay up late um because i kind of kind of because i have to i'm not watching netflix although yeah. i do that sometimes too um so what I've been doing is something called uh, polyphasic sleep, where what I'll do is I get about five hours, maybe six hours of sleep during kind of the night. And then I'll take a good hour, hour and a half nap at a certain point during the day. So I end up at around seven, eight hours of sleep. And I find that works for me. I can't I'm, do that. I can't nap. I'm going to take a break right here. 